Welcome to day 11 of the 30 day My D for SOC Analyst Challenge, which is a challenge that I created for the sole purpose of helping aspiring SOC analysts obtain practical experience in 30 days. If you're interested in following along, I would highly recommend that you pause this video and start from day one if you haven't done so already. By the end of this video, you will learn more about a common attack that you'll see in every environment, which is the brute force attack. What are some of the common tools that are used in the wild to perform this attack and how you can protect yourself from it? To start, let's go over what a brute force attack is. If you enjoy traveling as much as I do, you likely have a luggage ready to go and on that luggage, you may or may not have a keypad slash key lock on it. You know, the ones that have numbers on them where you got to set up your own three to four digit number to unlock your luggage. Well, if you're like me, you likely forgot the number once upon a time. And when that happens, we either need to think back to the number that we chose or we dive right in and spend a day and a half testing every single number combination possible, starting with the default 000, then 001, 002, and you get the point. What we are essentially doing here is brute forcing our way to unlock the keypad to access our luggage. In cybersecurity, a brute force attack is where an attacker is using what seems to be every password combination there is to attempt to compromise an account. I could almost guarantee that if you were to check your sign-in logs for your email account right now, you should see a lot of unsuccessful attempts sourcing from all over the world. And hopefully you don't see a successful attempt from a random location. Now, if you do, pause this video and change your password. One of the reasons why brute force is so common is due to the accessibility and ease of use. Servers all over the world have services running that are exposed to the internet, such as remote desktop, allowing anyone from the internet to connect and attempt to log in using credentials found in password dumps, malware, or through social engineering techniques, such as phishing. There are multiple subsets of brute force attacks, but we'll go over three of the more common ones that I see today. Starting with number one, which is simple brute force attack. This is similar to the luggage example that I mentioned earlier, where you'll try every combination starting from 000. The attacker will utilize trial and error in attempt to compromise a user's account to gain unauthorized access. And all of these attacks are usually done in an automated fashion. The second one is a dictionary attack. Similar to a simple brute force attack, but instead uses a word list that contains common words, phrases, and or passwords that are found in credential dumps. Credential dumps are passwords that were unfortunately leaked due to a successful data breach from a third party site slash company. One important thing to note here is that these word lists do not only contain words, but also digits such as 12345. So if your password is 12345, please change that right now. This attack compared to the simple brute force attack has a higher chance of success due to the nature of us humans using repeated passwords. The last one I'll mention here is credential stuffing. This is where an attacker will grab credential dumps and just try every single combination, including both usernames and passwords to attempt to gain unauthorized access. Now I do see this daily in my honeypot where random usernames are used to attempt to log into my server. So how does one defend and protect themselves from a brute force attack? Again, there are many different ways, but let's go over three popular ways to protect yourself, starting with long passwords slash passphrases. If you think about how brute force attacks work, now that you know a little bit more about it, an attacker is trying various different combinations to gain unauthorized access. So one of the best ways to make it difficult for the attacker is to use either longer passwords or passphrases. Now, the longer the password, typically the longer it'll take for the attacker to compromise the account. So do try and aim for at least a 15 plus character. And to make it even more difficult, you can include an in uppercase numbers and special characters. But the more complex you make it, the more difficult it is for you to remember. Thus, I would highly recommend that you use a password manager to help you generate random passwords and also reduce the risk of reusing the same password across multiple sites. The other option, in addition to a password manager, is to use what is called a passphrase, as these are much more difficult for the attacker to guess and brute force their way in. For example, please subscribe to my DFIR is an amazing passphrase, and it is quite easy to remember. The second way to protect yourself is by using what is called multi-factor authentication. 
Multi-factor authentication, aka MFA, is an additional layer of security that you can easily apply, as many websites and identity providers offer this. In fact, a lot of the incidents that I was involved in could have easily been avoided if MFA was enabled. You would be surprised of how many accounts do not actually have this enabled. What this does is that if an attacker successfully logs into your account, MFA would then kick in and prompt the attacker to provide an additional authentication method before having full access to your account. This could be via an SMS text, email, and or an authenticator. If you set up MFA, I would highly recommend you use an authenticator rather than SMS or email. The third way is to always be vigilant. Now I know this isn't something that you can apply to your account, but rather a mindset shift where you start to question everything and be on high alert. If you receive an email asking you to log in, take a moment to see where did this email come from and why is it asking you to log in? You can also sign up for alerts if your email account was involved in a third-party compromise by using haveibeenpwned.com. And if you found out that your account was involved, then you wanna change all of your passwords, especially if you're the type to reuse passwords. For any companies listening, always check your attack surface. What assets are publicly available to the internet? Should they be? What about the services? Should SSH or RDP be exposed to the internet? If not, turn it off or put it behind a firewall as this will help reduce the risk of compromise. Now we'll go into some of the common tools that are used in the wild. All of these tools can be found within Kali Linux and here are the three that are common slash popular in no particular order. The first one being Hydra, second being Hashcat, and third is John the Ripper. I am fully aware that there are multiple other brute force attack tools, but if you're into ethical hacking and wanting to get some exposure in how to perform a brute force attack, you can try using either one of the three tools listed. But please only perform this on machines that you own or have written permission to do so. I actually created a video called the Active Directory Project, where we use Kali Linux to brute force one of the machines, and if you're interested in that, you can go and check that out. To recap, we've gone over what a brute force is, the different subsets of brute force, how you can protect yourself against it, and some of the common tools that are used to perform this attack. In the next video, I'll go over how you can set up a SSH server up in the cloud, so then we can begin observing brute force attacks in real time. As a reminder, I'll be doing a giveaway where one lucky winner will win a free voucher for the MyD for SOC Analyst course. And additionally, there will be three one month passes for Try Hack Me up for grabs. Details are provided in the description. If you're an aspiring SOC analyst, I would highly encourage you to participate to level up your practical skills. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.